electrolytes. On today's opportunity for health accumulation, we're talking about can they benefit you? Who's going to benefit from electrolytes? Is it just flavoring my water? Or am I actually receiving something from them? Because there's companies everywhere, right? Trying to get us all to hammer electrolytes all the time. Hit that subscribe button, click that little bell uh, to be notified when there's new videos coming up and, and when they're gonna be released, and when they are released. And as always, uh, I'll be hanging out in the comment section um, on that day, trying to uh, you know, answer any of your concerns. And in this case, related to electrolytes, whether or not you need them, whether or not they might be beneficial to you. So when I say electrolytes, <clears throat> I'm mostly speaking of sodium, potassium, magnesium, and calcium. Now there are other electrolytes out there that enable us to conduct electrical currents, but these are the four biggies. And really most electrolytes that you run into are just gonna be looking at these guys. So the reason we care about electrolytes because they are vital for maintaining fluid balance, uh, transmitting nerve signals, uh, contracting muscles, uh, even you know, including your heart muscle and uh, the smooth muscles that line your blood vessels, line your intestines. And electrolytes, you know, they're vital also for maintaining acid and base balance in the body. That's a, uh, you know, a low pH, high pH. We can't have either one of those. We need that, you know, that 7.32 or so pH uh, of the body, of the blood. And electrolytes are essential for maintaining this. You know, too much acid or too much base, basicness, and we die. This is one of the reasons why I think it's silly uh, when people tell me they're you know, drinking high alkaline water you know, with a pH over 8.5 all the time for their health. Because I would say what we fail to realize is that that 8.5 or higher pH water is going into their stomach, which will ideally have a pH you know, around like two. Super acidic, you know, we're talking like um, more acidic than Coca-Cola, you know, it could destroy, you know, nails, super acidic. So all that high alkalinity water is doing is applying more stress to their body, forcing the body to figure out, you know, new ways of maintaining this acid-base balance. Because, you know, 8.5 coming into a pH of 2.0, and if we want acid secretions happening, hydrochloric acid production happening, all the things that enable digestion to happen, then the body's gonna figure out how to get that water pH down. So this gets us back to who could actually benefit from electrolytes. I got on a left little tangent, tangent there. But if you're engaging uh, in exercise training activities, you know, say lasting longer than an hour, especially the more vigorous ones, especially, you know, of course, if you're in hot or humid, you know, uh, environments, 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, kind of like days we've been experiencing here in Washington State, since I'm recording this in the summertime, this can be especially uh, valuable for the electrolytes cam. And, uh, you know, if you're going from a cool environment, normally you live in a cruel, cool, dry, arid place, climate, and then you go to a hot, humid climate, your capacity to keep electrolytes in good balance, maintain hydration status, uh, it's gonna be challenged. And, uh, you know, if you have physical exertion on top of that, then this is gonna be really challenging until your body's able to completely acclimate to the new environment. Now, if you eat you know, loads of processed food all the time, then electrolytes will be your friend because you're likely to be almost completely devoid of potassium and magnesium and overloaded with sodium, as sodium tends to be you know, the overwhelming ingredient used to uh, uh, make these processed ingredients, processed foods, highly palatable. You know, one of the, the most common electrolytes out there, formulas out there, is LMNT or Element, which has a thousand milligrams of sodium per serving. This is, a, this is a ton of salt, right? So for those living an ultra-processed food lifestyle, of course, you want to drop that style, but if you are, you know, you're dropping into fast food a couple times per week, your sodium is already going to be way through the roof, you know, such an excess. So adding on top of that, and, you know, the LMNT, the thousand milligrams per, per little sachet on top, you know, that could potentially create a significant imbalance uh, in your body's capacity to, uh, you know, handle stressors and, and for cells to communicate with each other. So 
I wouldn't suggest that. Of course, you know, step one would be to cut out or cut way down on the ultra processed foods, the fast food, that kind of thing. And then step two, while you're working on adjusting your food routine, would be to choose an electrolyte mix that is really high in potassium, which is essentially obsolete in ultra processed food. And when you know, I look for something that has a ratio about one to one or even two to one ratio of potassium to sodium. Now, number three would be if you're chronically ill, like with autoimmune diseases, chronic viral illness, Lyme disease, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, you, got, you just got a lot of allergies, then consuming electrolytes actually can be really helpful. And we're looking there at supporting blood volume, which if you can support blood volume, keep blood volume up, then generally you know, people, no matter what the condition they're experiencing is, they feel a lot better. You know, pers per that persistent tiredness or headaches, you know, those are a great reason to try out electrolytes because electrolytes enable and support electrical conductivity in the body. That little, we are an electrical machine here. That's why you can get electrocuted. You know, without sufficient amounts and, and uh, g a good balance in nerve impulses and muscle contractions, you know, you're, you're going to get spastic. So. This is where electrolytes are so handy. And you know, this is happening at the cellular level. Electrolytes are keeping cells in, in good balance, are causing communication to be, be, be efficient. And you know, if you get a, a few million cells that are unhappy, that's gonna create pain, that's gonna create fatigue, that's gonna create weakness. Those are gonna be sta a standard sy symptom profile of somebody who has unhappy cells. So many times, and I've had patients who ended up in a, a serious space feeling like they were at death's door from you know some chronic um, uh, infection or a chronic condition they're, they're enduring simply because they've allowed themselves to become super dehydrated from you know, a combination of life stress coupled with their underlying chronic illness. So electrolytes can be really, really handy if you have you know, a chronic illness. And once again, I would say look for a balance, not this, this huge exaggerated amount of sodium. Finally, if your appetite is really hard to get in check, you know, like, uh, I feel like addicted to food, addicted to just more and more and more when it comes to food, and you end, you end up, you know, snacking on salty chips and sweet desserts and then this kind of stuff, I mean, I would strongly consume, consider using electrolytes. And this is where I think sodium actually comes in handy. Uh, I mean, sodium, potassium, magnesium are all super helpful, but I feel like a little bit extra salt, extra, extra sodium, even for taste, uh, can go a long ways in helping, uh, uh, decrease and kind of suppress the, the over excessiveness of the appetite. And this is, you know, sodium has been shown to basically um, affect leptin sensitivity. And leptin is basically our hormone produced by our fat cells that, that signals satiety in the brain. But, you know, even though this would suggest that sodium could actually cause increased food intake, increased appetite, this is being done, these studies are looking at ultra processed food loaded with sodium. So I would suggest it's not the sodium that's the problem here. It is the ultra processed food. It is just straight up nutrient depleted food. Yes, the body's gonna want more food because it's been eating malnourished food stuff. It's just getting energy. So, you know, electrolyte drinks with sodium in it, you know, they can, they can facilitate if you're finding yourself in a state of boredom or, you know, you're finishing a meal and 10 minutes later, you're like, man, I could have another meal right about now. A, a, an elevated sodium electrolyte mix, or even you know, a, even a one-to-one -one ratio sodium potassium kind of mix, uh, can actually go a long ways in helping uh, decrease just this excessive appetite um, and need for like I need more something more to put in my system. The uh, so what we want to make you know decisions for food and, and a relationship with food as easy as possible, and this is just nothing that can make it easier. And on that note, related food, you know, there are plenty of foods that can act as electrolyte sources, you know, so you don't just don't have to take supplements necessarily, you know, raw milk, especially goat milk would be one of those. Goat milk is fantastic, especially calcium um, and goat milk. Also sweet potatoes, pickles, pickle juice, cucumbers, bananas, oranges, olives, pumpkin seeds, almonds, even actually dark chocolate, really dark chocolate is, is a great source of magnesium. So you can extract electrolytes from your food substance. So I hope this gives you an idea of how, well, actually one more, celery. Celery is another great one um, to consider. It's actually loaded with sodium uh, to help uh, 
you can use food substance to help you ma manage your electrolytes, but you know, for many people with, I would say the stressors of life, um, the overworking of the adrenal glands and sodium being a massive player in, in supporting the adrenals, you just, you just don't, there's not enough. And so uh, I think electrolytes can be valuable for most anybody, um, but I don't think, and I don't find with my patient population uh, that getting excess amounts of sodium via electrolytes is the answer. I would really try to stay like a two to one at most for sodium potassium or even a, a one to one ratio right on that, around there or looking more towards a higher potassium compared to sodium uh, in your electrolytes. So I would love to hear your favorite electrolyte concoction, how you use it. You know, I know so many of you guys make and gals make homemade concoctions that are delicious and that really just feel like they, they fill up your adrenal tank and, and give you that uh, a little bit more energy, a little more uh, you know, um, uh, focus, uh, that you don't have to go running towards that, another coffee and that kind of thing. So I would love to hear it and you know, put in the comments below, check out the um, free uh, electrolyte guide um, that we put together here um, at the link below and I will see you guys and gals next time.